In this video, we'll explore how you can build an AI-powered conversational search solution for your content. Let's go. Hey folks, welcome to Build with Google AI, where we explore how you can build practical solutions with Google AI technology. Searching for information is one of the most common uses of artificial intelligence language models. Ask a specific question, get a specific answer. It's a pretty compelling experience, even if the answer isn't always correct. But can you build that kind of experience for your content and your users? Yes, you definitely can. Docs Agent is an open source project built by one of Google's technical writing teams. It interacts with an AI language model, like the AI model behind Google Bard, and uses a clever system to build custom prompts for the AI to answer developer questions in a conversational format. Here's a quick demo of the project. For this demo, we're using the Flutter developer documentation. As you can see, the Flutter has a lot of great developer content. However, I have a really specific question. I just want to know how to use Flutter to display really long lists because I'm pulling data from a database. The Docs agent provides a web-based interface where you can ask a conversational AI model a question about your content and get an answer. So I just type in my question and click the Ask button. Now I just have to wait a little bit while it talks to the language model. And bingo, I've got an answer. You can see here that it's suggesting I use the list view builder constructor, which sounds like a good idea. The thing I really like about this response is that it gives me context. It tells me what information it used to answer my question, and it includes links to relevant documentation sections so I can follow up and get more details, which is really handy. But wait, how do they do that? Did the team build an AI language model and train it on Flutter content? No, they didn't. They actually used a simpler technique, and you can do the same thing. Let's talk to the project team and get them to explain how it works. All right, so I'm joined today by a few of the key contributors to the Docs Agent project, Keo Lee, Nick Vander Allermulen, and Megan Kearney. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us, Joe. Happy to be here. All right, so you're all our technical writers at Google, and what you all have built is really cool and useful. But I have to ask you, like, why go to all this trouble? Like, doesn't search work just fine? Search is great, but if you notice, uh, it has a lot of links, a lot of pages, a lot of reading to get to single sources of information. And the promise of conversational AI is to help you have a conversation with almost like a human to get the kinds of answers that you want for yourself. And so as tech writers, we're always trying to uh, give our audience the simplest, uh, most useful explanation for technology. So we were very curious about this new platform to see if it could work better for our end users. And we're also curious about it as a tool for us to see if it could improve our own uh, documentation production lifecycle. So anyway, we thought it was worth a shot. Okay, so how does this conversational AI system actually work? Yeah, so one of the important things to know about this project is we actually didn't like train or fine tune the actual AI model. When we started this, we didn't really know what we were doing. We we're kind of exploring what to do with this. So one of the things we came across that we could do is we could uh, give it additional context AI model. Um, so what we did is we basically took small chunks of text uh, this could be headings and paragraphs, for example. We turned those into numbers. Like the numbers are not actually like a digital fingerprint or anything like that. Uh, it's an actual representation of the data. Uh, we store all of that data in a vector database. So when you ask a question, we use the same text embedding to also uh, convert that um, question into numbers as well. And then when you ask your question, it actually searches against numbers and it gets the closest uh, context that you can return from the documentation set we gave it and then it just answers your question and also gives you relative links as well. So that way you can actually you know, check the content because sometimes there's a lot of uh, ambiguity. Did it actually answer my question? So you can actually fact check to make sure it was accurate for you. All right, so how can I extend this project to work with my own content? So with the Docs Agent project, the main thing you have to do is to populate a vector database with your own content. Mm -hmm. First, you've got to break up the content into small plain text chunks and create embeddings for those text chunks and store them in the vector database. Okay. But important assumption here is that you have your source content in a text format. In our project, we use Markdown because it's relatively a simple uh, text format, which is widely used, and it still has meaningful uh, formatting information like headings. 
So when we first started the project, we initially uh, divided up the, the content uh, at random, uh, which was using the 1500, 1500 characters, uh, splitting the uh, content by 1500 characters. But this ended up producing um, content, uh, less relevant context for AI model, which consequently generated a less helpful responses for users. So we, uh, we switched it to a different approach where we split, up the, split the content by headings. So now every text chunk contains heading and the paragraphs uh, under that heading. This approach worked a lot better in terms of the, uh, the answers that the AI model was able to generate. So the key takeaway here is that when you process content into a vector database, you need to, um, you need to split up the content in meaningful chunks. In other words, be careful not to split up the content at random. Okay, great. So I don't actually have to build my own AI model to make this work, but wait a minute, isn't this kind of cheating? Well, AI is about to be one of the most transformational platforms that we've seen in a long time. And for sure, uh, training, fine-tuning, and training models is something that requires a lot of knowledge and experience. And there are a lot of people with PhDs working on that. Um, but our little band of docs agents people, we wanted to see if it was possible to participate in the AI space um, in a way that was more inclusive and a little bit more accessible. And so that's kind of why we started experimenting with it. And we learned really fast that it is First of all, not that hard, and this is an, a, a way for people to start to use AI that's very approachable, but also it's really fun. And every week we meet on a Friday and we hack together, and we've been able to expand upon all of the things that we're learning and share with a, a small community so far, but we're hoping that community gets a lot bigger. So, Okay, well, great. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate you talking about the project with me today. Yeah, thanks for having thanks us. Thanks for having us. And thanks for asking us to do this. It's been really fun for us. It's really cool to be here. It's coding time. Let's quickly go over the technical details of extending this project for use with your own content. Don't worry about taking notes. Link to a detailed tutorial is in the description. After you clone the code from the Git repository, go through the installation process to complete the setup. Remember, you need to get a Google Palm API key and set it as an environment variable. You also need to have a directory containing all the content you want the AI agent to search against. Ideally, this content should be in markdown format and include titles and headings. Next, you'll need to prepare your content for processing and storage in the vector database. For this step, you'll need to split up the content into small text files so they can be encoded into vectors. If your content is in Markdown format, you can use this Markdown to plain text script, which divides up your content based on titles and headings. Once that's done, use the Populate Vector Database script to generate vectors and split up the text and add them to the vector database. This process uses the Google Palm API to generate vectors using an AI text embedding function. The text embeddings are numeric representations of the text content. In other words, they're used to approximate the meaning of the text as a set of numbers. Having a numeric approximation of the meaning is really useful for matching a question with related information. And that's exactly how this AI agent finds content related to your question before it gives you an answer. The project team discovered that they got better results when they split the text into meaningful chunks, headings, and related paragraphs. So if you have well-structured, well-written documentation, this embedding process will be more effective and the search function should perform better. And now we'll accelerate this processing through the magic of editing. Once you finish populating the vector database with your content, the system is ready to test. Run the chatbot launch script from the root directory of the project, And now you can open up the web interface and start asking questions. I know I skipped a few steps, 
but you'll find detailed instructions in the tutorial, which is linked below. Let's wrap this up. Using AI technology for content search can be really game-changing. Being able to ask specific questions and get specific answers feels a lot more like a human interaction, and so it's no wonder that lots of people are excited about it. However, just like human beings, AI systems sometimes get it wrong. So when you're building a system with this technology, make sure you put in checks to help folks verify answers and make sure that they're on the right track. And that's all the time I have to tell you about the Docs Agent project. Thanks to my guests, Keo, Nick, and Megan for building this project and helping me share it with you. Links to the code project and the tutorial are in the description. If you get something working, let us know in the comments. I really hope this episode helps you kick off your own project for building AI-powered search for your content and helps your users find answers faster. So keep learning, keep building, make something great. We'll see you again soon.